God had a plan and his plan was going to be the best for my family. Shiloh was, he almost didn't make it. Um, in fact, the army flew me to Germany because they didn't think we were going to get him home. Nothing can ever prepare you for something like that. They can describe down to the very finest detail of what's in that room, but until you actually see it, there's no way to, to make somebody understand that or to be able to wrap their mind around it. With our kids, they remembered him being active, throwing them up in the air and catching them and rolling around in the grass and jumping on the trampoline and swimming and fishing. Would he still be that father that they knew? I walked in and he had he had tubes coming out of his mouth and and he wasn't really conscious. I remember looking at the bed and looking where his legs should have been. And it's just the blanket stopped and you know, I just I love my brother so much and just like, you know, we've always been really close and then just to see that it was I don't think I'll ever be able to erase that first image out of my mind. I literally hit the floor. My horrible nightmares just came true. And I lean over this bed and I see the shape of his eyebrows. And I'm like, it's gonna be crazy. And those beautiful blue eyes pop open. And he as a respirator in, and he's like, Mom. He just says, Mom. And I'm like, I know life as I knew it, as he knew it, was completely over. I don't think any military wife from Iraq or Afghanistan ever thought that they could come home injured. Who wouldn't want to take care of their husband or their spouse or their son or their daughter. I don't think any of them thought that he was going to make it, but there were four others that couldn't. He didn't remember me at first when he came out of his coma. It took him a good week to remember who I was and a good 30 days to even talk about the kids. If I would have known it was going to take two and a half years for him to get better, I probably would have said I needed home health. It was offered to me, but my husband didn't want it, and I wanted to be able to take care of him. When somebody tells you that they want to kill themselves, you know, that's a scary thing. And then at the same time, my heart's breaking because I know that he's really, really going through something. He's really having a hard time. And he looks to me to help him be okay. And I almost uh, feel like I am a 24-hour therapist. You know, each day it, it varies, it, it varies. I threw everything in a bag that I could think of and locked my door with dishes in the dishwasher and my dog still in the apartment and hopped on a flight and went to Germany. I just left everything. Um, I left my job, I left my relationship, uh, I left all my personal belongings. I just packed basics into a suitcase and I just didn't think about it. I was like, I have to go. I have to go right now. I need to be there. I don't care where, where the money's coming. The money's coming from somewhere to get me there and I don't care what I have to do when I get there, but I just need to be there. And then once I was there, that that was it, that, that just became my life. Even though he was critical, nobody told us that. And a lot of times, I found out since, they do that because they want the family to have a last chance to say goodbye before they pull the plug. 
just to see him lying there and to know that most guys were would be in and out within three to five days and Andy's still sitting there and um, they told us that they brought us there to say goodbye because they didn't think that he was coming home. The guy gets wounded so the wife is, you know, she's the one that's that's uh, strolling him around in his wheelchair with the kids tagging along and it's a lot of stress on her. My role had totally changed at this point. I was no longer Shiloh's life partner. But now the person to help him live his life in a totally different sense. When Scott was released, he was still open. Like, he wasn't healed. His skin wasn't all healed. He was open. And so now I was responsible for this every single day. Instead of being there and helping the nurses, now it's 100% on my shoulders. What if he gets an infection? Is that my fault? You know, what do I do? That's when my real caregiving began. I mean, at what point in your life as a 22, 23 year old do you think I'm gonna have to go back into a state of where I was as a child. My mother basically taking care of everything for me. I think that's the biggest part of caregiving. You just have to be there for anything, no matter what. Whether he wants to, you know, joke about not having limbs or whether he wants to cry about not having limbs. So, you know, you just have to be there for every bit of it. I have, have to stay positive and I have to make it work because they don't have that option. I used to be a lot more optimistic and each day is a new day and I, 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 I don't so much feel that way today. When I jumped into this caregiver role, I jumped into it both feet and, and lost every bit of who I was before that. I don't know, I just, um, I really feel for my brother. He's been really strong through all of this and, you know, um, that's great, but it's still really hard to think that this is his his life now. It, it was our life, that became our life. Our life became something that people don't understand. They don't understand that when you're holding your 22 year old adult male child in the shower and he can't wash any part of himself himself, that is your job. But it made us so close, so sometimes and this, this sounds bad, but sometimes I feel like it's Scott and I against the world. I took care of him just like a mother does a child. That's the easiest way to describe that. Um, I had to feed him. I had to help him go to the bathroom. I had to help him do all of those things. You start to feel like, man, is this what I signed up for? Uh, I, I, it's, it becomes harder and harder because you, you no longer have a relationship with your, it's no longer this husband-wife relationship. You're actually the person who's keeping the other person alive. And most of the time when a couple stands and gets married, you say your vows through, you know, better or worse, richer or poorer, sickness and health. But I don't think a lot of times people think about the seriousness of the sickness and health part. And, and yeah, reality slapped me in the face. We don't account for the burnout that happens when you're caring for a veteran who really experienced a lot of who has, is experiencing a lot of physical and mental health challenges. Uh, these are, you know, we say, well, the wives or the caregiver can support, but, you know, in a few years, three, four, maybe five, six, you, you start getting, you know, a wife starts to feel a little tired. I got tired more of his episodes. I never got, I never got tired of taking care of him um, because I always wanted my partner back. I always wanted my friend back, my husband back. It doesn't make any sense how in one year you can need someone so much and a year later you don't. They go through all their treatment. The person, if they're married, the chances of them remaining married for a long period of time are very, very slim. And that's in my mind. Now, I might be wrong. Unfortunately, he just, how he says it is he just fell out of love with me.